So after you get all your pistons installed, now it's time to check for piston to deck clearance. So to check for that, you're really only gonna need about two things. A pit, uh, dial deck bridge, piston deck bridge. And what that does, as you can see, uh, it's already assembled. What it does is this goes on top of your, on top of the bore. So your bore would be in between here and one of the dial gauges you have will go in these holes, either two, two in the edge or just one down the middle. What I'm gonna do is just have one down the middle and these thumb screws or whatever these are, just hold it in place. This was only about like $45 at Summit Racing. They are magnetic, so you have like an iron block it would hold on, but magnets don't work with aluminum. So you have like an LS or any aluminum block, it magnets aren't gonna work with it. And in here, I got the dial port, uh, dial gauge. You might be wondering why on earth is a dial gauge in a box this big? Me too. So when you open it up, you'll find out. Yep, most of the box is just bubble wrap. I have no idea why they would waste so much on just packing. I mean, I guess they're trying to protect your investment. But the dial gauge, I mean, it's not like something that needs to be held up. Put in much storage, really. Comes with that card, the bubble wrap. And then the gauge comes in this box. Once you open it up. Slide it out. Now it's sealed inside a foam package. And then boom, there you go. So even though this is a comp cam, for some reason, it's Powerhouse. Uh, I'm not sure if CompCan owns Powerhouse or Powerhouse just makes the dial gauges for uh, Comp, but I have two. I bought two of the exact same part number and one has CompCan's, CompCan's uh, right there, uh, branding, and this one has Powerhouse. So I really don't know why there's two different ones, but it's a pretty good quality. I mean, as far as I know, it's pretty good. Um, I'm not sure how much these costed. Uh, I think around like $50, which is a lot, but it's gonna be accurate. So that's really all that matters. So what you do is you get your deck bridge, put the dial gauge in here, and yeah, loosen up the screw. There you go. Now it's in, and you just tighten it up. And we're gonna go and put it up on the uh, on the deck. So what you're gonna do before you place anything is you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and clean off where you're gonna be placing the deck bridge because you don't want no tiny little fiber or hair or whatever affecting um, the height of how how uh, of how the deck bridge sits on the on the deck itself. You want it to be perfectly flat. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and Place the dial gauge, dial indicator on the deck itself. You don't want it down in the bore. You want it perfectly flat on the deck. As you can see, it's not in the gate, it's not in the bore yet. So what we're, what we're doing right now is we're gonna zero the 
the dial first. So loosen the, the lock and just rotate the face until the until the indicators on zero. See, now it's on zero. Go ahead and lock it. Now you're just gonna wanna pick it up and then slightly drop it down because you don't want those magnets to be, those, these magnets are pretty strong so if you just place it down really fast it might it might change the uh the dial gauge and it might not be accurate you uh you have to restart so now we start turning the crank and we gotta do is make sure that this part of the in, of the uh, of the gate of the indicator is perfectly in the middle of the piston, so that would be about right there. So that means I gotta move it a little bit. As you can see now, it's pretty in the middle. Where you want it, you want the gauge to be down uh, on the axis of the of the rod pin because the rod the pistons can move up and down a little. So you want it to be perfectly in the middle where the rod pin is at. So the amount of movement does not affect the reading. Now what you gotta do is just turn the crank. So you just keep on turning the crank until the, uh, since, since the dial indicator is going clockwise, what you wanna do is keep on turning it until it stops going clockwise and starts going counterclockwise. You saw that? Now it's going counterclockwise. And we're gonna go back. And at that moment, if I go a little bit more, it'll start going uh, counterclockwise. And I'll go back clockwise. Well, I passed it. So it looks to be around 15. So just go back as much as you want, just to make sure that you're reading it correctly. All right, I'll just go back. Maybe a few more times, just to make sure that I'm reading this correctly. Yep, 15. So 15 is what my machinist told me that the, uh, how much clearance there would be. So let me just make sure I'm reading this correctly. All right, it's at 15 right now. And changed over but I'm not sure it might be 14 Did I pass it dang it so yeah I mean this is my first time doing this so 
I'm trying to, I'm just trying to get used to the uh, to the feeling. Yeah, you saw that? It stopped at 15 and it went back down. So that means I mean, let me try let me try to get it back to 15. There you go. So that means that the piston is 15 thousandths down in the bore. So it's not perfectly flat with the deck, which would be zero deck. Minus 15 thousandths down into the bore. Which is good because if I if I did if it was zeroed out, if it was zeroed, my compression would be uh too high to run on pump gas. So what you're using is you're using the little red numbers to read. Uh, that's how I'm getting 15 because I'm using the little red numbers. You don't want to use the big numbers um, because obviously your deck clearance isn't going to be 85, 80, 85 thousands. It's going to be 15. Well, at least for, for me it is with my build, it's at 15. Which now what you gotta do is find a head gasket, and there are a lot of head gasket thicknesses, and usually people try to get a quench and uh, of forty thousandths, and quench is the gap between the the head and the and the piston because you don't want you don't want your piston the, the your piston to be smacking the bottom of your head and uh that can just completely destroy your head so people usually try to go for a uh a gap of 40 thousandths so 15 so I'm at 15 thousandths in the hole and with a head gasket I'll need about 27 thousandths um uh, 20, 27 thousandths uh, thick gasket to get a quench of 41, which is good for uh, what I'm doing. For uh, you, you should target you should target around a 40 thousandths quench because that would help with uh, detonation, so so you can run higher compression and uh, not have to worry about running. A higher octane gas than you sh should need to so now you might think that we're done since we already checked uh, one piston but what you should really do is go ahead and check it for each corner so it's the e check each corner of each side of the, of the engine so you want to start check this one and then check this one because the machinist might have accidentally surfaced the deck not not perfectly straight so maybe this can be 15 thousandths in the hole and this can be maybe 20 thousandths in the hole who knows maybe it can be maybe this can be zero deck and this can be 15. i mean who knows you always want to go check because you don't want to get you want to get accurate compression accurate specs so just go ahead and check it on each corner check it on number two number eight just to make sure that it's perfectly accurate so now you might think that we're done since we already checked uh one piston but what you should really do is go ahead and check it for each corner so it's the e check each corner of each side of the of the engine so you want to start check this one and then check this one because the machinist might have accidentally surfaced the deck not not perfectly straight so maybe this can be 15 thousandths in the hole and this can be maybe 20 thousandths in the hole who knows 
maybe it can be maybe this can be zero deck and this can be 15. I mean who knows you always want to go check because you don't want to get you want to get accurate compression accurate specs so just go ahead and check it on each corner check it on number two number eight just to make sure it's perfectly accurate so just got done measured all four corners they're not exactly the same but they're enough that it won't affect compression that much or um or quench so quench is the distance between the piston and the bottom of the head because you don't want the piston to be smacking the top of the head once everything heats up so you need to have a little little gap most people try to shoot for around 40 thousandths and that's what i'm going to try to shoot for with 15 thousandths you subtract uh 15 from 40 they'll get they'll get you 25 but unfortunately there isn't a, a gasket that's 25 thousand stick so the closest one is about 26 or uh, 27 with, a, with the bore size i need 27 and it'll be a comedic gasket and for some reason those are it's out of stock and it'll be around august so that's pretty crazy but 40,000 quench is really what most people try to shoot for uh, it'll help with uh, detonation so you can run a uh, higher compression and uh, won't, won't have to worry about detonation with uh, pump gas so next step would be I suppose cam install but unfortunately the cam i went with is a howard's retro roller lifter and cam kit and for some reason those are just back ordered and i was told that i'll be receiving it around july which is uh from now uh tomorrow would be june the first so i'll I might have to be waiting one or two months just to get the cam and the head gaskets I need from Kometic. Uh, they'll be arriving around August. So my build is going to be on hold for maybe two or three months. Uh, I'm not quite sure. So uh, I really just don't know what uh, other than the uh, head, the eBay head update. Uh, hopefully I'll have that soon this month or June um, just need to take it to a head guy just to see what uh, what what needs to be done if it needs to be surfaced uh, to find out the CC of the uh, intake runner and the uh, of the chamber but yeah guess the project's gonna be on hold for a few months now unfortunately but that does give me time to save up money to buy the rest of the stuff that i need i'll be leaving the part number and link of the uh, deck bridge and the dial indicator down in the description if anyone's interested if you guys have any questions uh any comments any tips uh anything really just drop them down in the comment section or DM me on Instagram. Uh, unfortunately, this might be the only video for about a few months. So I'm just apologizing in advance if you don't see any videos uploaded until maybe September or July. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Or August. So if you got any questions, just let me know. And see ya.